Nando can use this one to park in front, mm -hmm. but he no puedes no se puede sentar contigo. No. No, he has to be on the opposite side of the bleachers. Good morning, my high school. For today's announcements, attention seniors, you must return all library books and pay all library fines before the last day of school in order to get your diploma. Athletes, please turn in your uniforms to Hi, Josh! Whoa, well, there you go, Emily, Robbie. How are you? Good, and you? That's all for today's announcements. Remember, it's always a great day to be a criminal. The community of Yuma is special. It sounds cliche, but that's the only way to put it. Yuma County has a total population of around 200,000 people, so it's a good-sized place, but it's also at least 150 miles away from any other city of comparable size. The census people call this type of community urban isolated, and the people of Yuma like that just fine. That isolation has served them well over the years, and within Arizona, they've garnered a well-earned reputation for rugged individualism and a resilient do-it-yourself attitude. It's also a literal oasis, set in the middle of the desert, at the intersection of Arizona, California, and Mexico. Its defining characteristic is the Colorado River, which runs right through the middle of town, making its arid lands teem with life and rich topsoil. You might have heard of their famous prison, which hasn't been in operation for over a hundred years, but it still stands as a symbol of the harsh Arizona desert life, hearkening back to the days of the gold rush, when Yuma was the only place to cross the Colorado, and enterprising men and women migrated west to find their fortunes, or their demise. Today, Yuma looks much different than it did a hundred years ago, but that pioneer spirit remains. Yuma and its surrounding regions are made up of mostly working class families, with a large population of winter visitors, military families, and Latinos. Of course, the high schools are a reflection of those demographics. The high school district was formed in 1909 and now has five comprehensive high schools plus an alternative high school that combined serve a total of roughly 11,000 students. Superintendent Tony Badone, the woman tasked with running the district, has worked in that capacity for 10 years. From her early days as a teacher at two of Yuma's high schools, she had a vision for the students of Yuma, a vision of excellence and equal access to a high quality education. It's rare when you get the opportunity to help open a new high school. And when Savola opened in 1988, I was honored to be part of the first faculty. And the mission that the leadership team chose was the Cibola High School was committed to success for every student and every staff member. It was this idea that every student could go to college. There were some philosophical things um, kind of percolating in our district about access and equity of access. It was almost like we opened up a lab here in Yuma County uh, for experimentation and for observation. In 2003, Tony and her staff had an idea. Instead of dictating to students what their academic journey would be, they wanted to let the students choose their own path. They decided to try something small. Instead of offering advanced placement classes to only academic high achievers, they opened the AP classes up to all students and waited to see what would happen. We took the prerequisites off. Um, we opened it up to anybody who uh, would who wants to challenge themselves at that level. And over the course of about 10 years, we saw a significant increase in participation. We saw a three or four year dip in scores, and then we saw the scores start to pick up. Invigorated by these results, the district leadership began to look for other ways they could increase student access to a high quality education. Access before achievement became their rallying cry. But in order to implement real system reform, they would need both strategic and financial support. Unfortunately, this happened to come at a particularly difficult time for education funding in Arizona. If I could sum up the state of education funding in Arizona, it would be going, going, gone. Before the housing crunch, before the Great Recession, 
Arizona was doing very, very well. There was plenty of money to be spent on state government and education makes up a huge portion of the state government. The housing bubble bust took everyone by surprise. The cutbacks were across the board. Education was a huge chunk of the budget and so of course it suffered. It was a very, very scary time. It was a very depressing time. What happened after that was the schools did not get the money back. The budgets, the legislature continued to pass, remained low and funding for public education in Arizona really was inadequate. Despite this challenging landscape, the district didn't waver in its desire to further their efforts at school reform. And to ensure it was both effective and sustainable, they sought out a broad range of support. They soon found the ideal partner in Helios Education Foundation. Helios was founded in 2004, and its mission was to use philanthropic engagement to create opportunities for students to succeed in post-secondary education in both Arizona and Florida. We decided early on that we wanted to be in partnership. Helios is really about partnerships. And so for our definition of engagement is to engage our partners, to ensure that they have the resources to do what they said they could do. Helios had had some success in its early years funding smaller educational initiatives, and by 2010, they began to look for opportunities to engage their mission on a larger scale. They were looking for something big. What if we could create the ideal high school environment? What if we could actually change what high schools look like? Two high schools was our idea. One urban, one rural, that might adopt this concept of the commitment to all students and that Helios then could engage more directly with those schools and try to really flush out this, this idea. The leadership team out of Yuma surfaced and Tony Badone, who was a superintendent, came forward and said, you know, we have been on this journey for you know, creating excellence in our schools for a number of years now. We've been practicing these strategies. We've done this with AP. We believe in our kids. We can do this. When we had a chance to understand what these high schools look like in Yuma, that you had a, a, a team of leaders that were really to, willing to explore this, this new concept, Yuma became the natural partner that, that we wanted to engage with. The grant was given on one condition. Helios didn't just want to disburse funds and then get updates from the district. They wanted to be true partners. Helios wanted to offer not just dollars, but perspective, best practices, and expertise. The district, in turn, would provide valuable on-the-ground knowledge, present their issues and concerns, and provide an opportunity for Helios to continue to evolve its mission and the ways it goes about achieving that mission. And so, Ready Now Yuma was born. This is a journey. Ready Now Yuma is a journey that we're all taking together. The grant that funded Ready Now Yuma provided roughly $5 million over the course of five years, which would allow the initial cohort of students to go all the way through high school under this new plan. We stand beside you, ready to take on whatever tough times might be ahead and to celebrate the very special milestones that we believe are in our future. The goals for Ready Now Yuma were bold and wide-reaching. First, to graduate every Yuma Union High School District student prepared to succeed in college and career. Second, to embed a high expectations college-going culture within the district. And third, to increase the number of students entering and succeeding in post-secondary education. Students would graduate from a Yuma Union High School challenged, supported, and prepared. The key to this, we believe, will be the persistence. The persistence to stay the course, because we know that it's what's best for our students, and we know that we must be committed to the successful implementation of Ready Now Yuma. We lived in Baja California, in the Valle of Baja California. It's a small town. There are primary schools, schools, primary schools, secondary schools, and really, Eran muy pocas las clases que ellos tenían y decidimos migrarnos. Pues ya que eh, pensamos que aquí hay, hay más, más probabilidades ¿verdad? De, 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 de desarrollarse, de estudiar mejor. Entonces eh, quisimos que tuvieran un mejor futuro, más que todo. My name is Luis, Luis Ángel, which is my, my two names. I'm 18. I'm a senior here at San Luis High School. I came to the U.S. when I was a fifth grader, so I was just 10 years old. And I came here with a 
knowing any English at all. Cuando Luis ya estuvo en clase, rojo, rojo, su carita, y quiso llorar, y le dice la maestra, ¿qué te pasa, Luis? Es que no sé inglés, no sé nada. Coming in as a freshman, it was definitely hard for me to adapt to this whole new thing, and then, especially this whole new way of thinking. And then sophomore year, I got, I was more comfortable with it, so I did much better. And had all my classes being AP my junior year, which was five of them. National College Decision Day is coming up, and I'm kind of stressed as to what college I'll be going to. I'm leaning more towards Occidental and the fact that they have this program with Caltech. And what I want to do relates to space exploration. And then JPL is right there. I want to do something that has to do with space, regardless of what it is, even astronomy or physics, that that, that is what I want to pursue. I guess it's sort of an ambition or a vision that is seen more in fiction, but I don't, I don't see that as being a limitation to wanting to send, send people to space and possibly colonize other planets. It's an idea that I've always liked to envision and it's, it's not an idea that it's just taste an idea, I kind of want to make it happen. When Luis nos dijo que, que iba a irse a, al colegio, le dije, este, le dije, oye hijo, le digo, pero ¿por qué te vas tan retirado? O sea, habiendo colegios aquí cerca. Dijo, pero es que aquí no hay, no hay la carrera que yo quiero. In the Mexican culture, there's this thing where family, it's the most important thing. So leaving your family is not the desirable thing when it comes to making your life decision. Uh, it's always been a central thing where you got to stay close to your family. And even though you make your own family after a certain number of years, you still stay close to your parents. Pues ni modo, ellos tienen que seguir su, su camino, seguir su, sus ilusiones. Entonces le dije, pues ni modo, le digo, pero te vamos a extrañar. My parents don't really have any like expectations in the sense that they want me to be something, but they do want me to be what I want to be. Hay que tratar de superarnos y salir adelante, como yo siempre se lo he dicho a mi hijo. Lo que tú aprendas, lo que tú estudies, nadie te lo va a pelear. Dinero, posesiones, te lo pueden pelear, pero lo que tú aprendas, nadie te lo va a quitar. If I could point to one key element of running now, Yuma, that really uh, is a powerful element is that concept of equity for every student. Ready now, Yuma, offers every student, regardless of their past ac academic performance, regardless of their aspirations in the future, every student access to a high expectations curriculum. The number one thing that we knew from the beginning needed to be in there was a high expectations, inquiry-based, internationally benchmarked curriculum for every child. We chose the Cambridge International General Certificate of Secondary Education curriculum. The Cambridge curriculum isn't new. It's an offshoot of Cambridge University. Yes, that Cambridge University. And it's been around for over 150 years. Currently, it's being used in over 10,000 schools in more than 160 countries around the world. It's internationally benchmarked, which means that it's on par with the most effective education systems around the world. And not only does it align with federal and state standards, it surpasses them. So when people in Yuma talk about receiving a world-class education, they're not kidding. Cambridge itself provides uh, a internationally benchmarked syllabus and an internationally benchmarked set of board exams. Authentic exams that, that test students at the level of critical thinking, inquiry, problem solving. The other schools in the country that, that we work with um, and kind of, again, share ideas with, they're all using it as an honors program and we're using it for everybody. We knew we needed a curriculum for every student that prepared them for success in AP. A lot of writing, many labs in biology, we went from nine to 27, a lot of speaking, a lot of Socratic types of teaching strategies and learning strategies, students learning to ask questions. The Cambridge Curriculum, or ICGSE, fosters critical thinking, problem solving, and collaboration. It's also very different from the typical American K-12 curriculum. Its signature spiraling method of instruction is unfamiliar to most teachers. Students keep using and building on things they've learned throughout the year. 
Usually when you're a freshman in math, you solve equations, and then you graph the equations, and then you look for an intersection. No longer here. Now we work on simplifying fractions, and then we'll do a little bit of geometry for a week. And then we circle back and we start simplifying equations and solving the equations. You probably want to start going through carefully and tallying up which shapes need to be found still. You learn algebraic concepts and geometric concepts and you revisit those concepts and they're applied to different kinds of problems at a higher level of thinking. In Yuma, enthusiasm for the new program of study was tempered by skepticism from teachers. Veteran teachers who had spent years in the classroom honing their skills were now being asked to teach differently. And teachers who were new in their careers were told that everything they'd just been taught about teaching now had to be adjusted to a new way. Understandably, some friction was inevitable. Being in the middle of the change, you almost feel like you're climbing Everest without any gear. Teachers had put themselves out there to, uh, to take this risk with us. It may seem a little rocky some days, that's okay. You may have reservations, you may have disagreements, that's natural, that's okay. It's not a, a change that we can just go and say, all right, we're gonna do everything a total 180. And, and the kids right away, the first year doing it, it, it was a struggle. Cambridge is complicated. It is, is truly demanding. It is asking for high-level thought processes. Because the curriculum spirals in all of the subjects, it's really learning how to teach that spiral. The answer to our questions is in the room. It may take time, it may take consensus building and discussion, but the answer is always in the room. Once teachers start to really believe in the process that they're doing and really believe that what they're doing is changing student behavior or changing student achievement, then you're really going to see true reform happen. If you give them the tools and you help teachers overcome that fear that they're not going to be good enough, they will rise to any occasion. All right, good morning, how are you? Are you awake? Are you ready for your test? Yuma is home. Um, I went to high school in Blythe, which is like uh, an hour and a half away. I went to study education, eventually became a teacher, and then Mr. Steen, who was here at the time, offered me a position and I took it. And I, this is home. This is right. I'm going to start quickly because I really want to collect data today. Yesterday, I transitioned right into Cambridge, ready now Yuma right at, that's when I was hired, right in that transition. It was a huge transition from a workbook setting to hands-on lab, and I was kind of scared. The challenge has been becoming familiar with it. What do these labs look like? Are we doing them accurately? What do the lab reports look like? Uh, what should rubrics, marking schemes look like? You know, it was a different curriculum. It was different, a different way of doing things. I want to know how fit, um, I really am. And I want to use breathing um, as a way of collecting data. So he's going to help collect data about me, and I'm going to help collect data about him. The curriculum yes. and the funding both provided a new sense of science. Kids are allowed to pick a research topic of any choice. As long as they can make a hypothesis that is testable, they're able to run with it. Are you ready to go outside? Take your paper, writing materials, your cell phones for stopwatch. Think you can beat me at this? Let's see if I can jump rope in heels, huh? Not that good. Come on, Cruz. Show us what you're made of. What's the numbers look like so far? I kind of had no idea the impact it was going to make on the kids themselves. There's millions of dollars being put into a lab for these kids in Yuma to be the first kids to ever practice real research in somewhat of an industrialized type of setting. So look at this one versus some of the others and what can you tell me? You're gonna have a lab report that is expected of you with hypotheses, materials, methods. The growth is just tremendous. Um, kids who have been able to go and do research at U of A as an intern during the summer um, because of the research class. That's what science research has done for these kids is giving them confidence 
to be able to believe, you know, that they can do these things and have opportunities. When you walk away from it all, like, what can you take from this? I like the aspects. I definitely like, believe that Ready Now Yuma has provided opportunities beyond uh, what existed before. The, the classroom environment, the resources, the funding. We have kids in Yuma who are winning at regional competitions, who are going to international competitions that was never seen before. So I think that's evidence in itself that it is providing a change and all for the, for the good of the kids in our community. With the implementation of the new curriculum, leaders at the district and at Helios knew that without ongoing support for teachers, none of their efforts at education reform would be successful. Teachers, after all, are the ones that interface directly with the students, and they would need a strong show of support from district leadership if Ready Now Yuma was to become successful. We're going to talk a lot in this district about some very basic beliefs. One of them is that we believe in every student. We believe in every student, and therefore, we believe in every teacher. We want the teachers to feel just as challenged and supported as the students in order to be prepared. So when they walk into class, they're confident. And when they're confident, their students are confident. We've spent a lot of time building a coaching model that has a three-part support system for the teachers so that they have the same supports and the same preparedness to go into classes and teach students at a higher level. The coaching triad consists of three legs, an instructional coach who guides teachers on classroom management and the most effective methods of teaching, a data coach who helps teachers analyze classroom data in order to improve their teaching, and a Ready Now Yuma coach who's there to help teachers implement the Cambridge curriculum and stay aligned with the district's vision. My role is making sure I get information to them when they need it. I hope I can beat them to that point, but if not, then when they have a question, try to get, it, get an answer. If it's a question on, I'm not sure if this lesson makes sense. I'm not sure if this is being taught right. They're there for me. We want them to be prepared when they're in front of their students. We want them to feel comfortable with what they're doing with the curriculum. Those coaches all have the same components and the same goals. Their goal is to support and prepare every teacher so that that teacher can support, challenge, and prepare every student. Another key support for the teachers was implementing the use of PLCs, or professional learning communities. Teachers were given designated time within the school day to collaborate with their peers, share expertise, and break the old model of teachers instructing in isolation. Some teachers really like to work independently, and in the more traditional approach, you could walk in, shut your door, and you have your own little island, and you can control that little island, but we're really looking at breaking down that one-man island approach. We are constantly gathering our teachers in the room, allowing them opportunities to collaborate together, allowing them to look at best practices, and to truly be reflective in regards to what they're doing. We're providing time within the calendar, within the school day, within the school year, for teachers from every campus to get together. We have teachers that have been in the room about a year and a half to teachers that have probably been in the room maybe 16, 18, 20 years. So there's a vast um, array of experiences there and every teacher has a voice. We talk about ways we taught things. What did you do? How did you teach this? Tell me what you did. It's not a you have to do X, Y, and Z. It's let's all collaborate and be creative. And if it works for you, maybe it will work for me. The more perspectives that you can get uh, bouncing ideas off of one another, I think the better product that you get. It really gives teachers an opportunity to see that we all have common struggles so that they don't feel alone, like they're this island that's unto themselves, and they have opportunities to really begin to collaborate and share. In addition to the PLCs, the district also funded Professional Development Days, a chance to share best practices with education leaders outside of Yuma, or to hone their training in the Cambridge curriculum. Anytime a district undertakes an aggressive initiative, an initiative to improve student achievement, to better prepare students for college or for career. Anytime you embrace a new approach to that, I submit to you that you're gonna encounter far more setbacks than the more timid contemporaries in other districts. It's a process, and I, that's what a lot of people forget, that we're not trying to put a Band-Aid on. We want to we want to heal the system, rather than just try to try to put some quick fix on. I want a culture in which people working in my district will step up 
We'll speak up. We'll listen up. And are you ready for this one? Who will risk failure in pursuit of better ways? One of the first things to be implemented as part of Ready Now Yuma was the elimination of tracking, which is the old system by which students' pathways are preordained by their previous academic achievements. Now, students of all achievement levels were combined into the same classroom. High achievers could help their peers, and more average students could be pushed to higher levels of achievement just by being in the same classroom with more advanced students. A kid looks around at his classroom and he sees that there's some pretty smart kids in here. I must belong in here. That's, uh, that's a pretty powerful motivator for, for a kid, as opposed to looking around and saying, oh, I know all these kids. I've been in the same reading group with these kids since first grade. But what happens when you raise the standards for every student in your district? Will the naturally high achievers be challenged enough? And perhaps most importantly, will those students that struggle be left behind? How do you continue to give them access to a high expectations curriculum? Take advantage of those options as far as upper division pathways and then uh, pursue the career of their choice. How do, you, how do you do all that? The first line of defense is real-time interventions. Using formative classroom data to alert teachers as to when a student may be struggling, teachers are able to make immediate adjustments that can reinforce the lesson for the student. We need to make sure that they start understanding the content when that disconnect happens. If they are able to do immediate intervention, that makes them feel like there's a place where, okay, I can get back on, I can get on that on-ramp back into this, this class. Students can also take advantage of tutoring, which is available at all campuses for all Cambridge level classes. And if a student does miss out on learning, they're able to remediate with an extended learning program, or ELP, which was designed in-house by Yuma's data team. The ELPs were designed to directly mirror the coursework from the actual class, which is different from a standard online class. We've got the components in place that align with what our teachers have done for their scope and sequence, and we can begin implementing real time as students are struggling as opposed to waiting until they've already failed. It's not a pull-out program. It's a work with the student or these students in real time and then push them to where they will then be online with their classmates. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the Yuma High School Marching Criminals. Directors are Michael Herrig, Head Director. Josh Colson and Sochi Rodriguez, percussion instructors. As a little kid, I would imitate the radio broadcasters. I would just imitate the people, you know, like bring the voice down here, you know, like, se da la vuelta y sigue andando, golazo, you know, stuff like that, you know, and that's, that's sort of like something I would want to do, you know. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. I remember one time in the locker room, the baseball coach, he heard during every season they would say, would you want to announce? And I was like, why not, you know? They had to teach me the sport though, because as an announcer, you got to know the sport as much as the player. Russ Clark mentored me. Flag on the play, flag on the play. Flag on the play. Pass incomplete intended for Joe Herrera. Pass incomplete intended for Joe Herrera. Very nice, you knew that. I had to work on that. Nathan has all the potential in the world. He is an incredible student as far as he is outgoing, he's outspoken, he's driven, he's excited, he's exciting. He's got lots of great ideas for things that he wants to do. I've often thought about going into politics and stuff like that. Working here downtown, you have the mayor's office. I'd like to give a voice to those who have none. And touchdown Yuma criminals! Pass reception by number nine, Damian Miller. Nathan is a very involved student, which sometimes comes to affect him a little bit because he's got things going on. He may be absent for this, may be absent for that. Sometimes I become too involved, though. <laughs> um, like sometimes I take too much on my plate and later on I can't, you know. This value goes into our X1. This value goes into our Y1. Everybody okay with that? We've got finals coming up this week and with seven new objectives, plus some of the reviews from the old ones, we're looking at 12, 14 different things that he needs to be able to show me that he can do this year. Here's his grades, and you can see from our unit three right here, he's failed three of his objectives. He has recovered two of them from zeros, which is great. 
he's got his average right now is a D, so. If he doesn't pass his final right now, I, I'm a little worried because I don't think he will make it. Whenever I see numbers and letters mixed up together, it's like, what's going on? <laughs> um, but I think that polynomials is what I'm having trouble with. I offer tutoring in my classroom after schools and Tuesdays and Thursdays and things like that, and they can, he can come in and work on those things with me. Let's look at the next one. Subtract, 12 minus nine is three. Keep the sign of the bigger number. You know, he's passing right now, um, but he's on that, right on that edge. I was in track, and I know that the last lap is always the hardest, but it's the one that you have to put the most effort in. Mr. Langland's got my back, so I will be at tutoring, remediation, all that kind of stuff to help, so I feel good. Right now, the immediacy of things hasn't really hit him, and it's going to, and I think all of a sudden it's going to hit him like a Mack truck. Kind of nervous, but excited for the final, because I know the material, it's just applying it. Graduation's in three weeks. I gotta put it in gear. As the first years of Ready Now Yuma had been implemented and were starting to gain momentum, the students began to move into the upper grades and were encouraged to start diversifying and thinking about their career plans. With the elimination of tracking, students now had the freedom to choose their own path to graduation and beyond. No longer did students have to choose between an academic path or a career and technical path. All classes were open and available to all students, from CTE classes to advanced placement classes to upper division Cambridge classes. I can take advanced placement or I can take engineering, but then I can also go over next door and I can take welding. We want to be able to help students decide, not us, let them decide what kinds of courses to put together in their junior and senior year. You don't have to have your plan, you don't have to know what you're going to be when you grow up, but you need to have the power to make that selection. The district started to see a rise in students taking both CTE and AP classes as students supplemented their academic learning with real hands-on job skills. The opportunities for the students and, and what they're bringing from from, that, from their first two years in the academics and um, into that next program makes them successful in that next level of whatever courses they choose. The paths are just so open to them. Above all, the student supports, high bar curriculum and the like were all meant to facilitate a culture shift in the minds of the students. The district and Helios knew that a college-going culture is the underpinning of any successful attempt at reform. That's what Ready Now Yuma is. It's a change of culture. It's an expectation that every student can and will learn and that we're not going to let them off the hook. It's trying to get students to see that no matter how, you know, whether you think you're smart or you're not so smart or, you know, I come from a family of only farm workers so that's the only thing I'm going to be able to do. No, that, that, that is not the case. It's trying to communicate to the student that and being that guide to get them to wherever they're dreams want to be or wherever their skills lead them towards. Find a job you really love and you will never work a day in your life. Whatever it is that you love to do, that's what we want to push you towards because you have some kind of skills to prepare you for your future. We're seeing the success and you hear it directly from the students saying, here's what I'm doing, um, here are the courses I'm in, and here are my plans for post high school. The students may not be able to say to you, oh, well, Ready Now Yuma is a, a and give you the tagline, but you see more and more kids saying, well, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to college. Yeah, I'm going to go do this. I'm going to go do that. Um, and there's a confidence that you can just feel among the students that I don't think was there six years ago when I was in the classroom. All right, all the kiddos have to be in the circle. Very good. So we're gonna read Valentine Mice, okay? Is everybody looking? Valentine Mice deliver Valentines. Red, pink, skip, hop. My name is Jennifer Guzman and I am a junior here at Gila Ridge High School. I was born and raised here in Yuma, Arizona, and I've been going to Gila Ridge all three years so far. I think the thing that I love the most about working with children is when they remember something you told them a while back. That's when you know you actually taught them something. That's when you know you're making an impact. Mm -hmm. Do you like to smile? Mm -hmm. Valentine's is filled with love sure and smiles. Are you going to smile a lot on Valentine's Day? Yeah. Yes, of course you will. The Little Hawks Play School at Gila Ridge High School it's a preschool that we have open to anybody in the community. All you have to do is sign up. So the class title is Child Development 2. So this is the hands-on part of CTE. So it's a CTE class, 
but we're able to work hands-on. Just like welding and auto, for example, they get to fix cars and they get to make their things. We get to work with children. Yeah. Now we're all gonna go over the colors. What color is Allie on? Green! And Vanessa? Green! So it's really interesting because you are preparing them to start their life, and at the same time, you're preparing yourself. What do you think he gets? <coughs> we're gonna find out. A Valentine hug! Yay! The classes I'm taking right now is Spanish for Fluent Speakers, Early Childhood Development 2, Performing Choir, Speech, Additional Math, and AP Biology. At the college, I'm taking English 102 right now. I started taking classes at Arizona Western College my sophomore year. So through my sophomore year, I began English 101, and through that class, I wanted to get ahead in school. So I was taking my English class so I can grow more as a writer, because I really do love writing. It helped me develop skills that I was able to use in my Keeler Ridge High School classes. I really want to start working towards my associate's degree, so to make sure you know I can get ahead, get the credits I can right now, so I can focus a lot of time on that. Dual credit as well. Some of the seven steps you can see, um, if you go through the admissions, you're gonna do everything online or you can go in person and someone can help you with that. Do you think it'd be better to go in person or online? I think it would be better to go in, okay. in person and speak with someone. They might be able to give you a tour of the campus. Okay. I think that the moment that really, really did impact me and made me decide I'm not just gonna be another statistic I'm going to break off from that and make an impact on myself and my life was definitely the Montezuma National Leadership Summit when I saw everybody planning for their Ivy League and planning to apply to their other colleges right when they were just finishing their sophomore year. So I thought, you know what, I could do this too. Like what makes me different? I still have as much potential as everybody else and I can still do this on my own. We can't change until we expect more from ourselves. So I think we really do need to start setting the bar higher for ourselves. Jenny, ¿dónde dejaste tu vestido de graduación? Se me hace que está colgado en el closet. En el closet no está. Pues fíjate, a lo mejor está arriba de la cama. I think that academic wise, my mom and my dad do want to see me do the best that I can do. That's why they encourage me taking classes at the college and they encourage me taking higher level classes. That's one of the main things they want me to do good academically. Estoy muy orgullosa de ella porque ha salido adelante con lo poquito o lo mucho que le hemos dado, pero sobre todo mucho, mucho amor. Y se ha esforzado tanto que ha brincado muchos obstáculos de personas que le decían no, así no. Ella siempre, siempre ha dicho, piensa con la cabeza para buscar enfrente lo que yo quiero ser. Yo a ella en un futuro, yo la veo en el Capitolio o posiblemente de abogada, porque es lo que ella más desea, abogar por las cosas buenas que tiene este país. Y yo la veo que le gusta mucho eso. Wow, ¡Qué guapa! Pero mejor ese? con este. Para eso duré 12 años en la escuela. Wow. Y yo veo en ella a una mujer que va a servir de ejemplo para muchas otras. Yo la veo así a ella. Wow. Estás hermosa. Gracias a Dios. Oh. <laughs> Qué felicidad. Thank you. You hear a lot about data these days. Empirical data, qualitative and quantitative data, translating that data into evidence-based practice. But what does it all mean exactly? And more importantly, how can it be used in a way that really informs and improves the classroom experience? Teachers now use a consistent tool for data collection in their classrooms that tracks test scores, report cards, and even attendance all in one place. Teachers can then combine and analyze all of that data to get a real-time view of how students are performing in class. That's how I group them. 
So they're grouped based on their ability to critically think and reason in a scientific way. They're grouped on how they score with analyzing graphs and data, which is the ACT science, and then how they're doing in the actual class. So I have them grouped and paired based on all those different sets of data. So I use it constantly. We know if students are or are not achieving in the moment, because if I don't know where kids are doing right now today, doesn't matter what they're doing at the end of the semester. If they failed, they've already failed, I've already lost them. That's not good enough. Every student prepared means we're catching them along the way. The students in Yuma also got a new online learning management system that they can use to interface with teachers and access homework assignments and other relevant classwork. And on the district level, data is being used in ways it never was before. There's always different data sets to examine, um, comparisons to be made between the, the different sets. I've seen the whole evolution of the, the use of data in our district grow exponentially. While data is a useful tool for the district, it's just as important for Helios. Seeing ReadyNow Yuma as an opportunity for a proof of concept, the foundation was interested in gathering data from the start on every aspect of this initiative. One of the things is about ReadyNow Yuma that's what's really interesting is it's not a step-by-step -step process. Um, and ReadyNow Yuma really leaves a lot of the decision making to the district. And so this is a very localized program that they have to make choices and decisions about. So the way that we use that data and the way that we share it with others in the state um, and, and, and even, even nationally is they get to tell their story and we get to tell the story about the challenges that they've ran into in implementing this, the, this college and career readiness standards and benchmarks and how they've confronted those and moved on. Um, it really is about showing other people the, the, the thought process of how they've worked through this kind of comprehensive school reform so that they, don't, they can learn from those as they implement the same types of programs in their district. So, on to the big question. What has all this data gleaned? Is Ready Now Yuma a success? Is it too early to tell? What do we know now, and what do we still need to learn? Well, here's what we can definitively say as the initiative reached the end of the initial grant period. Graduation rates increased by 12% since 2012. Discipline rates plummeted, a 33% reduction in suspensions. AP enrollment continues to climb. 29% of students tested for at least one AP class during their high school careers, compared to 20% five years ago. The percentage of ninth grade students who have passed all of their core classes has increased by nearly 50% and those who fail a course has dropped by a whopping 45% from five years ago. What we're most proud of is the fact that we have a 16% over the state average rate for college going. On top of that, 60% of our students from all of our five comprehensive high schools go on to college and career. And San Luis, one of our high schools, has a 76% college going rate. That is for schools that, that puts them in the top 10 of schools that have over 100 students in their graduating class. When we think about the last five years of Ready Now Yuma, you know, what the, the good thing is what comes to mind is, is what we, really the successes. When you start to think about the, the increase in graduation rate, the uh, higher percentage of students that are moving into some type of post-secondary college environment, um, a deeper engagement of all of the students, uh, you know, you can really feel good about what has happened and evolved in the community uh, through Ready Now Yuma. At the same time, as with every community project and partnership, you know, we've had our share of challenges. You know, there are some elements where we didn't get the type of increase or improvement that we had really hoped for. The district continues to struggle with standardized test scores like ACT and AZ Merit. They've responded to these challenges by increasing their focus on classroom instruction and heightening alignment with the Cambridge curriculum. When Helios Education Foundation first partnered with the Yuma Union High School District you know, some five years ago now, uh, we, we said to the community that we are going to be an engaged partner and that we're going to be here for the long term. Um, and so we're really excited that we find ourselves now at that point. And, and we're going to remain engaged with the Yuma Union High School District now over the next couple years, focusing specifically on teacher support and uh, aligning classroom instruction to the Cambridge curriculum in a more meaningful way that we believe will continue to enhance the work of Ready Now Yuma. Uh, and it's a way for Helios to, to remain engaged uh, in a meaningful way in the Yuma community and towards the success of Yuma students. Hey, there you go. <laughs> 
I ended up going to Los Angeles, which isn't that far away from San Luis. It was still far enough for me to find myself. ¿Cómo están? Dale, pues bájate las cosas para cenar. ¿Traes hambre? Sí, ¿qué es lo que hay? Uy, mira. Lo que te gusta. Ah, bueno, pues, para comer, entonces. Dale, pues. <laughs> the reason why I chose Oxidano over other colleges that accepted me was because of the well-rounded education that I wanted. Taking all those AP classes, for example, taking AP English Composition was one of the most important classes to me because I thought I was a really bad writer. And now when I was in college, I remember writing my first essay and getting an A in it. Same for taking my AP math, AP calculus, or like AP physics and AP chemistry. These were classes that really prepared me for the college level courses that I would take at Occidental. It's better, way better than I expected. Being a JPL is definitely unbelievable. I could only dream about this when I was a kid and it's incredible to think that I'm part of this now. Being home after a year away at college has definitely made me appreciate home much more. Prior to going to college, I was really excited about leaving. And then while I was away, I was really excited about coming back. I really wanted to go far because, not because I wanted to leave this place, but because I wanted to find out what was out there. Being at Occidental, being away for college has made me grow a lot. Definitely having had all these experiences has changed me for the better. But now after a year away and seeing what San Luis needs, I want to come back and bring the opportunities here so more people can go out and see the world that I have seen. So seeing how San Luis has given me these opportunities and coming back and helping San Luis, uh, giving back to San Luis is really one of the best feelings I've had. Ready Now Yuma is a means with which to prove to the state of Arizona that if you invest in education in a, in a strategic and meaningful way, if you raise expectations of students, if you empower the teachers and the leadership of, of the school district to implement the types of change that they know will help enhance the, the student's education environment, um, the students will rise and they will achieve and they will succeed. And we know that that's what Ready Now Yuma is doing. We're at the point where we're now ready to move our work forward. We were in our infancy before with some of the work that we're doing, but now we're taking it to the next level. To see the community respond, to hear from community leaders excitement about what is now happening and the change that's happening in their school system tells us that we have come a very long way. What we don't yet know is the sustained effect that long-term systemic change will have on the future of the Yuma Union High School District. Systemic change in education is not going to happen overnight, and it's not going to happen with, with one program or, as they say, with one silver bullet. It's important that we don't use test scores or an immediate fix on, is this working? Great, let's keep doing it. If it's not, then let's throw it out, or why, why isn't it? What are you doing wrong? Well, it's not anybody doing anything wrong. It's called It Takes Time. I really do feel as if Ready Now Yuma and Gila Ridge High School prepared me and gave me the right tools in order to get to a four-year university. I'm first generation, first in my family to go to college, so it's not easy making it past your first year. And the fact that I've made it this far and that I'm really already close to graduation, I really feel as if it wouldn't be possible without Ready Now Yuma and without Gila Ridge High School. I feel like I made the right choice by coming to ASU. I really have expanded my networks and communications because of the area, because of the people and faculty who work here. My ultimate goal is to work in state government behind the scenes, whether that be in the public sector or the private sector. Just ultimately working in state government and bettering the state of our state is my ultimate goal. All the chaos and the mayhem going on at the Capitol isn't going on in the classroom. There are wonderful things going on in most Arizona classrooms every day. All the argument and debate, I don't know that it has a huge direct impact on kids and learning, which is you know, what education is all about. It, um, it has a huge impact before the school day, after the school day, 
and the long-term planning, but when that classroom door closes and the bell rings, Arizona educators are educating kids. For Arizona's public schools, the work continues. As we look to the new school year, what Ready Now Yuma shows us is that regardless of circumstance, politics, or setbacks, preparing every one of our students for college and career is achievable, one student at a time. All right, everybody, eyes on me, listen. It's time to get to work. Let's go be amazing today.